In 2025, China unveiled a 600 km per hour maglev train that levitates on magnetic fields and can outrun commercial jets. At the same time, California's high-speed rail, 13 years behind schedule, still hasn't laid a single operating mile of track. It's the ultimate race, one country pushing the boundaries of physics, the other stuck in political gridlock. But what if this isn't just about trains? What if it's about the future of global dominance? In the world of high-speed transportation, two trains have become symbols of two radically different futures. On one side, China's 600 km per hour maglev, the fastest ground vehicle on Earth. On the other, California's high-speed rail, a project so delayed and over budget, it's become a political punchline. Let's break it down. China's maglev train doesn't roll on wheels, it floats. It uses electromagnetic force to levitate just above the track, eliminating friction entirely. The result? A train that travels at 372 miles per hour, faster than most private jets, with virtually no wear and tear. It's not just fast, it's efficient, quiet, and built for the long haul. Now zoom across the Pacific to California. Back in 2008, voters approved the California High Speed Rail Project, promising a sleek system that would connect San Francisco to Los Angeles in under three hours. 16 years later, not a single mile is operational. What began as a $33 billion vision has ballooned to over $128 billion, with endless delays, lawsuits, and political infighting. Meanwhile, China has laid over 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail and tested its maglev prototype on full-scale tracks by 2021. China's maglev isn't just theoretical, it's real. In 2023, they completed trial runs in Qingdao. Engineers watched the train hit 600 kilometers per hour like it was nothing. There are already plans to link cities like Shanghai and Hangzhou, cutting travel time from nearly three hours to under 20 minutes. Let that sink in. California's system, on the other hand, still hasn't solved land acquisition disputes. Environmental reports are still pending. Cost overruns have forced officials to scale back ambitions, and critics now call it the train to nowhere. The contrast is brutal. While California can't get tracks laid in flat farmland, China is building maglev lines through mountains, rivers and earthquake zones at breakneck speed. Their system includes drone-based surveying, prefabricated track beds and a centralised AI logistics system that oversees construction from space. It's sci-fi level tech being implemented today. And it's not just about speed. Maglev technology also means lower maintenance, less noise pollution and reduced carbon emissions. In a single trip, a maglev can save tons of carbon dioxide compared to short-haul flights. Meanwhile, California's HSR system is still debating whether to use trains that cap out at 220 miles per hour, if they ever run at all. So, what's really at stake here? It's more than just infrastructure. It's a clash between vision and indecision, between execution and red tape, between the country building tomorrow and the one stuck in yesterday's paperwork. And this is just the beginning. Speed is one thing, but in the race between China's maglev and California's high-speed rail, the real shocker? The price tag. Let's start with China. The Qingdao maglev prototype reportedly costs $64 million per kilometre a high number on paper, until you look at what you get. State-of-the-art magnetic levitation, earthquake-proof track systems, futuristic stations, and military-grade logistics integration. That's all in design, labor, land, and launch. Even at that premium, China can deliver an entire operational maglev line, start to finish, in under five years. Now compare that to California, the original budget in 2008 was supposed to be $33 billion for 800 miles of high-speed rail. That breaks down to about $41 million per mile. But by 2024, 
the cost has surged past $128 billion, with estimates predicting more to come. In some segments, like the Central Valley, the per mile cost exceeds $200 million, and that's before trains are even running. Why? Because China and California operate under two completely different systems. In China, land acquisition is handled swiftly, often through central planning. Labor is scaled through national programs. Materials are locally sourced. And perhaps most importantly, the government treats infrastructure as a long-term investment, not a political football. California, it's gridlock in every direction. You've got lawsuits from landowners, environmental compliance that takes years to process, union battles and local opposition committees that stall progress for months, if not years. In 2011, a 50-page environmental impact report for just one small section of track took three years to approve. That's longer than it took China to design, test and unveil an entire maglev train. But here's the twist. Even with California's soaring costs, they're not buying innovation. They're paying more for less advanced technology. The current plan doesn't even include true high-speed maglev, just electric trains on conventional rail. Meanwhile, China is planning a nationwide maglev corridor linking over 10 major cities with travel speeds that would render domestic flights obsolete. And the ripple effect of these costs is enormous. In China, every new line triggers a chain reaction. More housing developments, more tech parks, more tourism, more jobs. It's a strategic multiplier. In California, each delay just drains public trust and taxes. By 2023, over $10 billion had already been spent, with nothing to show passengers. So who's really paying the price? It's not just governments, it's the everyday commuter the person who could have saved four hours a day if that train existed. The business owner waiting for better regional access. The student commuting across cities. It's billions of taxpayer dollars vaporized, not for progress, but for paperwork. And while one country keeps expanding its reach at 600 kilometers per hour, the other is stuck in neutral, burning cash, not rubber. But what about the big picture? Let's zoom out and ask whether this race is even about transportation at all. At first glance, it's easy to think this is just a tale of trains. One fast, one slow, one finished, one forever in progress. But that's the surface. Zoom out and you'll see what this really is. A proxy war between two visions of the future. China's maglev is more than transportation. It's a symbol, a moving billboard of national ambition. Every time it glides silently through a city, it sends a message. We can do what others only dream of. Meanwhile, California's stalled rail project. It's become a cautionary tale, not just about bureaucracy, but about the cost of indecision. And here's why this matters. Infrastructure is power. When the Roman Empire built its roads, it wasn't just for mobility, it was for control. The same is true today. The country that builds faster, connects deeper, and moves people more efficiently, wins economic leverage, cultural influence, and even military readiness. China knows this. Their maglev isn't just about passengers, it's about positioning. By building ultra-high-speed corridors, China isn't just making domestic travel easier. They're laying the foundation for regional dominance. With future plans to connect Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and even Europe, these trains could one day carry not just people, but trade, diplomacy, and strategy across continents. California's rail, it doesn't even connect two major cities yet. Now look at the numbers. China spends more than $500 billion per year on infrastructure. More than the US, the EU, and Japan combined and they treat it as a national security asset. Rail lines are built with dual use potential. Passenger one day, troop or cargo transport the next. It's fast, flexible and future-proof. In contrast, the US has no national high-speed rail strategy. There's no unified vision, just scattered state projects, 
each fighting for survival in their own political sandbox. And this isn't just about America falling behind, it's about what kind of world we're building. In China, children are growing up believing that floating trains at 600 kilometers per hour are normal. In the US, many kids have never seen a train outside a cartoon. The longer this disparity grows, the more it shapes everything, from economic competitiveness to cultural confidence. So who wins in the long run? The country that builds quickly, learns fast and adapts faster. And right now, the scoreboard isn't even close. But there's a twist, because buried deep within the California project is a wild card. A potential game changer that could still shift the balance if the state plays it right. Let's uncover it. Here's something most people don't know. Buried deep within California's high-speed rail blueprints is a wild card, one that could flip the script entirely. It's not a new route. It's not a bigger budget. It's private tech. While government agencies wrestle over land deeds and lawsuits, Silicon Valley is quietly positioning itself to hijack the future of American rail. Companies like Hyperloop TT, Virgin Hyperloop, before its pivot, and Elon Musk's Boring Company have all proposed radical alternatives, some that could make maglev look slow. The most promising, a next-generation maglev hybrid running inside vacuum tubes slashing air resistance and pushing theoretical speeds past 1,000 kilometers per hour. If even partially realized, this would double China's maglev performance and usher in a new category, ultra high-speed rail. And while China's government builds vertically, California has something Beijing doesn't, venture capital firepower. Tesla didn't come from a public transport grant, neither did SpaceX. In California, moonshots are built in garages. If tech giants see value in solving transportation at scale, and they do, high-speed travel could leapfrog the current system entirely. Now here's the wildcard twist. In 2023, the California High-Speed Rail Authority opened the door to public-private partnerships. Translation? The tech world finally got an invitation. If just one major player steps in, Apple, Google, Amazon or Musk himself, the game changes fast. Instead of traditional rail, imagine a dual layered solution, conventional high speed on the surface, experimental pods running underneath, one funded by taxpayers, the other by innovation. And both designed to finally get Californians moving. This wouldn't just close the gap with China, it could open a new race, not train versus train, but paradigm versus paradigm. But there's a problem. None of this is guaranteed. Silicon Valley moves fast, but infrastructure is slow. And tech firms are known to pivot, abandon or kill projects without warning. Investors want return, not red tape. And so far, the California Rail Project has been a graveyard of good intentions. Still, the potential is there. If California can stop fighting itself and tap into its tech DNA, it could produce something China didn't see coming. A reinvention, not just replication. A transportation system built not by central planners, but by visionary outsiders. It all depends on whether that window stays open or slams shut. But if it works, China's 600 kilometers per hour maglev might not be the end of the story. It could be the beginning of a new chapter one California might just write. Maglev trains might look like the future, but behind the smooth levitation and jaw-dropping speeds lies one harsh truth. This is not easy tech. It's one thing to watch a glossy animation of a train floating across skylines. It's another to build a system that actually works, reliably, affordably, and at scale. China makes it look effortless, but even for them, it's an engineering nightmare behind the scenes. Let's break it down. To start, maglev isn't just a faster version of normal trains. It's an entirely different species. There are no steel wheels, no standard tracks, no diesel backups. It requires an electromagnetic track bed with millimetre precision. Even a small misalignment can throw the system off entirely. 
Every kilometre of maglev track is custom built, down to the bolts. It demands powerful superconducting magnets, cryogenic cooling systems and uninterrupted power supply grids that can withstand massive voltage spikes. That's not infrastructure, it's a high-tech ecosystem. Now add in environmental stress, temperature changes cause rail beds to expand and contract. Seismic zones, like those in California, introduce vibration and ground shifts. For maglev, even a 1mm vertical misalignment can cause vibrations at 600 km per hour, which at that speed can be catastrophic. Then there's cost. Maglev construction costs are often two to five times higher than conventional high-speed rail. And the maintenance? Off the charts. Every section of track has to be constantly monitored with sensors and recalibrated regularly. You're not just maintaining a train, you're maintaining a levitation field over hundreds of miles. China makes it work through a single-party infrastructure pipeline, centralised decision-making, vertically integrated contractors and national research funding smooth the bumps. In the US, replicating that model is next to impossible. Just look at Japan. Despite inventing maglev tech in the 1960s, Japan still hasn't finished its Tokyo to Nagoya maglev line. Lawsuits from environmental groups over a small river tunnel have delayed the project by years. And this is in a country that already leads the world in punctual bullet trains. If Japan struggles with maglev, imagine the chaos California would face. Add to that land use limitations, complex zoning laws, historic preservation requirements, utility relocation plans, and most of all, public opposition. No one wants a futuristic train slicing through their backyard at 372 miles per hour. Even China has been cautious. The 600 km per hour maglev line isn't fully deployed yet. It's still in trial phases, with commercial service expected only between select city pairs. They're scaling slowly, not blindly. So, while maglev might feel like a silver bullet, it's more like a surgical scalpel. Highly precise, incredibly expensive, and only effective under the right conditions. And that raises the final question. If neither maglev nor high-speed rail is a slam dunk, what's the real solution? Let's zoom out again and ask, what's the smartest way forward in the 21st century transport race? So here we are. China has a train that floats on air and screams past 600 kilometers per hour. California has a vision that's stuck in a legal maze. One system is real, the other theoretical. One races across the skyline, the other crawls through paperwork. But is speed the real measure of success? Here's the twist. High-speed rail isn't just about going faster, it's about moving smarter. China's maglev is impressive, but it serves a very specific slice of routes, and it's costly to scale. California's project, for all its flaws, still has the potential to unify disconnected cities create regional economies and revive rail in a car-dominated culture. This isn't a race with a clear finish line. It's a collision of strategies. China bets on centralised, hyper-efficient rollout. The US, or at least California, is gambling on flexibility, democratic process, and maybe even private disruption. Both come with risks. Both come with opportunities. But one thing is clear. The future of transportation won't be won by flashy animations or even raw speed numbers. It'll be won by the country or company that finds the perfect balance between ambition, execution and real-world usability. The one that builds systems people actually use every day at scale. Because a train that goes 600 kilometers per hour is amazing, but a train that shows up on time, affordable and accessible is revolutionary. So who's really winning the future? The country that moves people? Or the one that inspires them? The battle isn't over. The map isn't drawn. And the tracks? They're still being laid. 